Turn your Bible to the book of Genesis, chapter 28. Turn to the book of Genesis. You see, for the past weeks, we've been talking about an encounter with God. Praise the Lord. Are you here with me, somebody? We've been talking about an encounter with what? And I believe that every child of God, everybody deserves or have, needs to have an encounter with God. Praise the Lord. You need to have an encounter with God. And one of the reasons why you need to have an encounter with God is because so that you can have your testimony. Hello? So that you're not going to say, you're not going to read what David said. I was glad what he said to me. Let us go to the house of the Lord. You caught it yourself by saying, I was glad because when I went to God, I experienced something. Hello? When I went to God, I experienced what? Something with God. Let me tell you something. One thing I want to encourage you is that regardless of where you find yourself, how you find yourself, what is going on in your life, what is not going on, one thing I want to encourage you is to find the house of God and to be there. Every Sunday, God has a word for his people to set his people free and to liberate his people. God told Pharaoh, he said, let my people go that they will go and worship me. In other words, God had to break off the chains, liberate the people so that the people can have the liberty to worship God. Because worshiping God can only be done in freedom. It can only be done in liberty. It, can, it has to be free will and free choice. Praise the Lord. So, so regardless of what is going on in your life, where you find yourself, how you find, how many mistakes you've done, what you've what I come to the house of God. There's no place like the house of God. There's no place like the Bible Cathedral. Genesis chapter 28, and I read from verse 10. And Jacob left Bathsheba and traveled around Haran. Where he came to a certain place, he stopped for the night because the sun has gone down. He took one of the stones from the place, put it under his head, and laid down. He had a dream in which he saw a stairway set up on the earth with its top reaching to the heavens. He saw the angel, he saw the angels of God going, going, going up and coming down on it. The Lord was sitting above it saying, I am the Lord, the God of your grandfather Abraham and God of Isaac. I will give you the land on which, which you are lying on and your descendants. Your descendants will be like the dust of the earth. You will spread out to the west and to the east, the north and the south. Throughout you and throughout your descendants, every family on earth shall be blessed. Remember, I am with you and will, will watch over you wherever you go. I will bring you back to this land because I will not leave you until I have done what I have promised. The system. Then Jacob woke up from the sleep and exclaimed, Certainly the Lord is in this place. And I did not know it. Filled, filled, filled with, with awe, he said, How awesome this place is. Certainly this is the house of God and the gateway to heaven. Then he said, Early the next morning, Jacob took a stone, he put it under his head, and he sat up, he sat up with a marker and poured olive oil on top of it. He named it Bethel, the house of God. Previously, the name was called the city of laws. Praise the Lord. God is good. We started in the past weeks to begin to talk to you about having an encounter with God. The child of God needs to have an encounter with God. The child of God at some point in your life needs to have a revelation of who God is. And the revelation of who God is begins with an encounter with God. You see, one cannot 
truly and fully known God until they've encountered God. Apostle Paul thought he knew God, he knew what God is and what God wants. And he believed wholeheartedly that he was doing the will of God by walking around and persecuting the followers of Christ. It wasn't until he had an encounter with God and began to realize that I don't know the God that I thought I knew. I don't know the God of my fathers. And when he had an encounter with Jesus, his life turned around and he became another person. He became a proponent of the very thing he was killing people for. And when God sent Ananias to him, God told Ananias, you go and pray for him. I will show him what he has to do and how much he will have to suffer for the kingdom because of all that he had put the church through. My encouragement for you this afternoon is to begin to desire to have an encounter with God. Because real change in the Christianity or in your Christian life or your day-by-day -day life begins when you have a genuine encounter with God. You see, people that have not had an encounter with God can be cold today and be warm tomorrow, warm today and cold tomorrow because they've not met God, don't understand God, and don't know who God is. But by my prayer to you, that at least you can begin to desire to know God. Bible says the knowledge of God, wisdom. In biblical perspective, is to know God about God and the mind of God. Bible says that Jacob was walking and he has had a difficult time in life and he's, he was walking. And he got to a place. He took a stone and he laid down on his head. And then he had a dream that he saw the angels were going up and coming down and God was sitting on top of him. He said, you see, that was the first encounter that this man had with God. He had seven encounters with God. This was the first encounter. So you have to understand, this man was running from his brother because he had stolen his birthright. He was running because he found himself out of place, out of purpose, out of location, out of everything. And he was running to a land that he wasn't sure of. And, and he wasn't sure and he didn't know what to do. And he had walked all day and he was tired. And Bible says that because the sun has gone down, he laid down somewhere and he began to sleep. And there he had an encounter with God. And the life of this man changed This guy was a thief. This guy was a supplanter. This man can con you from your possessions. He can lie his way out of the hands of the cops. He can find every excuse in the book to get away with everything. But he realized he came to a place in life. He couldn't run away from life because life came to a close with him and he wasn't sure what to do with himself. Everything he knew, everything he had worked for, as he had left and was running. Until he came to a place that he met God. Listen to me. I believe God wants to meet you and where you are and at the point of your need. What you need is not a good job. What you need is, is, is God. What you need is not an extra paycheck, but what you need is, is God. Because once you have God, anything is possible. Because Jesus said, seek ye the kingdom of God and the righteousness of the kingdom. And everything that you want, that 
you see, it says, will and shall be added unto you. This man had an encounter with you. Last week, I spoke to you, I told you that, I told you that, 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 that when, 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 when Samuel had an encounter with God, Samuel became another person. Samuel became something else. Bible says, says someone begin to prophesy and they begin to ask him, is this man one of the prophets? You want real change? You want change to change in your life? You want your children to change? You want real change to happen in your life? What you need is to encounter God. When you encounter God, something about your mind will change, something about your spirit will change, something within your psyche will change that will make you another person. So then this man, Bible says, it was changed. And the sons of the prophet said, is this guy also one amongst the prophets? Because he was prophesying and they could not believe that this guy who was walking around leading the sheep suddenly had become a prophet. It's because he had an encounter with God. A genuine encounter with God would change you. The reason why we have a church that is lukewarm, a church that is full of words and witches in the pews is because there's no encounter. So the church is sick, the church is suffering, and the church is dealing with all kinds of mess. We shouldn't be in the church because we as a people, we as a church need to have an encounter with God. We have to walk in victory. We have to walk in blessings. We have to walk with our heavenly Father. But it is because we have not encountered God, we remain the same. I was a 13, 14 year old boy. I'm going to pray and after prayer, I have encountered God. I was invited somewhere to, to, to join a prayer group and I encountered God. And when I encountered God, the heavens opened and God said to me, son, I want you to, anyway, the God that appeared to me was a black man, anyway. And he said to me, go and preach what I have taught you. And from that day, my life changed. I have never been the same. So I ask you and I tell you that what you need is an encounter. Because when the servant of the Lord had an encounter with God, Bible says he became what? Another person. He became something that he wasn't before. When Jacob encountered God, Jacob became something that he wasn't before. When you encounter God, you will be that which you were wearing before. In other words, that which is in you, that has been hidden for years, will begin to emerge. Your giftings, your abilities, your grace, the same things that God has endowed you with, Bible says they will begin to emerge out of you. When Paul encountered, nobody did more miracles than Paul. Paul picked up Darius' face with his hands. Their mere presence, shadow of Paul, raised the dead, healed the sick. All kinds of things was happening. Why? Because this killer somehow had an encounter with God. And that is what God is asking you. God is saying, it's not about how much you tell me you love me. Because anybody can say they love you. But it's what you do and how you do it. Don't no more tell me you love me. Do love. Love is an adverb. It is a doing word. It is an action word. So God said, if you have genuinely encountered me, you will change. And this change is not about me, but it's rather about you. It's about what I want to do and how far I want to take you. Praise the Lord. When you encounter God, you begin to know the counsel of God. When you encounter God, you know the counsel of God. When you encounter God, you know the mind of God. Let me tell you something. Until you encounter God, you walk endlessly. You walk without a purpose. Until you have an encounter with God, you live your life on this earth and not fulfill your purpose. Because it is the encounter of God that your destiny is revealed. 
that your purpose is revealed. That who you are and who you have to be and what you're supposed to be is revealed in God. It is when you encounter God that you know who you are. Until then, you have no idea who you are. Peter thought he was a fisherman until Jesus said, I will show you how to fish men because he encountered Jesus on the mountain of transfiguration. The prophets, they thought they were shepherds until they encountered God and God put a word in their mouth. Isaiah thought he was but a little child until he encountered God and God gave him a purpose and a reason why he has to live on another day and to declare the mysteries and the counsel of God to the people of God. Listen to me. Until you meet God, you will walk aimlessly, purposeless, and be amount to nothing because it is in the encounter with God that your vision, your purpose, who you are is exposed, revealed, uncovered to you. So sometimes the child of God needs an encounter with God. I thank God I had an encounter with God and he revealed my purpose for me. And I've run away from it for many years. They didn't want to do it because it was too hard as far as I was concerned. I was too young and it was too hard. But as hard as I ran, I couldn't go anywhere. I find myself in the hands of God. There are times, I remember many, many years ago when I was 16 or 17, when I'm about to indulge in some sort of sin, I can hear the voice of God. And one time I told a person, I can hear the voice of God telling me, stop, I can't do this. What you need is an encounter with God. Paul was walking aimlessly, killing innocent people. When he had an encounter with God, his purpose was revealed to him. And Paul knew what he ought to do, what he ought to be, and who he ought to preach to. I ask to you, child of God, what you need is to have an encounter with God. And so having one on one and to for God to have a one on one with God. Not when your pastor is there, not when nobody's there. It's you and your God. Because encounter time is destiny time. Encounter time is purpose time. Encounter time is greatness time. Because at that period, who you are is exposed, revealed, uncovered. The mysteries of God concerning you, concerning your masters, concerning your family and your children is revealed, exposed, covered and uncovered. That is why he told the prophet, call unto me and I will show unto you mysteries that you have no clue what they are. In other words, he said, when you encounter me, I will reveal to you mysteries. That you don't know. Amen. Things you thought you know. I will tell you things that years cannot tell you. I will reveal your strengths and your weaknesses to you that will baffle your understanding. I will shock you for days. I will tell you things that men cannot tell you, that women cannot tell you. I will tell you things that you will not believe. I will reveal and expose things to you that will shock you. So God said, I want you to seek me because you have to have an encounter with me. Encounter time is destiny time. Encounter time is destiny time. Encounter time is destiny time. And it's purpose time. Look at Jacob. Was running from mama. Was running from daddy. And Esau wants to cut off his head. I don't know who else he has done something to. But usually when people have a certain ways about them, they don't only do it to their family, they do it to other people too. So I don't know where else he was running from. Bible didn't tell us. 
But he was running from his people. He was running from the land. Listen to me. Your land makes you who you are. That is why regardless of what happened in Katrina, in New Orleans, the people don't want to leave. Your land tells you who you are, where you're from, and how far you've come. He ran away from everything he knew. Until he had his first encounter with God. And God began to tell him about himself. And God began to reveal his destiny to himself. King Saul was walking around herding sheep, looking for the sheep of his father until he had an encounter with God through the prophet and he knew what his destiny was about. David was in the wilderness fighting bears and lions. Let me tell you something. If you are not careful, if you don't encounter God, you fight bears and lions the rest of your life in the wilderness and you think you're doing the will of God. Meanwhile, you're supposed to be in the palace to be king. An encounter with God will change you. Will change your destiny. Praise the Lord. An encounter with God will bring you to the place you have to come. You will know the counsel of God. Bible says many are the, are the plans in the heart of a man, but God knows. And it's only the counsel of God that stands. I speak to you, wonderful people. That what you need. It's an encounter with God. What you need is to experience God. What you need is to feel God. What you need to bring yourself to the place that you can encounter God. That you can experience the power of God. What you need is to come to a place that the power of God would change your life your destiny. See, what you need is an encounter with God so that you, you will say, oh, I used to pray for 16 hours, but now what? Oh, I used to, I used to, I used to do that uh, four years ago. I used to go to church every day, but now what? An encounter with God would change your life will bring you to your knees, will expose your destiny to you, will put you where you belong to be. Let me tell you something. Amongst the things God told Jacob, God said, I will bring you back. In other words, I will relocate you back to your place of birth. To fulfill your destiny. If you had not encountered God, you would have wandered in the wilderness. A race of people would die. He would amount to nothing. Walking alone in the midst of that wild desert alone was enough to die over there as the result of wild animals. What you need is to encounter God. Let go. You know, when Jesus, when blind Bartimaeus encountered Jesus, you know what he did? Bible says he was holding a staff and some few belongings. He let it go. He released it. When he released it, he was ready to receive from the master. And suddenly he could see. And suddenly he had purpose. Suddenly he was not useless anymore. He was not useless anymore. He was somebody. It is easy to walk around aimless and 
think you're doing something. It is easy to be without purpose and think you're doing the will of God. It is easy to come through and through and yet not fulfill your assignment. It is easy for you to miss your purpose. Let me tell you something. Nobody was a failure than Jabez. Nobody was a failure than Jabez. But he made a deliberate choice to say, I'm going to God and to encounter this God. So that this God will change my destiny. I tell you, people of God, this is the time. This is the season. This is the hour. It's your decision. It is your choice. It is your purpose. It lies in your hands. Why are you deliberately seek God whilst He can be sought after? Oh no. It is up to you what you do, what God wants from you, that you will be what you are to be. Oh, seek after other things and just not to encounter God. It's your choice. It's your decision. It's your calling. But I tell you, the Father desires a change in your life. The Father desire something different from you. The Father wants you to come to Him, seeking after Him, and let go of this, and let go of that. You are holding on to things that are only destroying you. You are holding on to things that are only cancerous to your belly. Yes. The Father is calling the Father is calling. The Father is calling. He's calling for a generation of people. He's calling for a man and a woman that will seek after him. God wants to change you. He wants to change your life. He wants to change your life. He wants to give your life a purpose. He wants to give your life a meaning. He wants you to be all that he has created you to be. He wants you to make sure that you are rise to your full potential. But you need to encounter this God. You need to feel and walk into the presence of God. You need to have an experience what David said. I was glad when they said to me, let us go to the house of the Lord. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. I'll begin to bless the Lord. Begin to thank God. Begin to thank God. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. So begin to pray, 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 pray. Pray, 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 pray. Pray, 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 pray. Pray, 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 pray. Pray, 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 pray. Oh, lift up your voice. In the name of Jesus. Oh, lift up your voice. In the name of Jesus. Oh, lift up your voice, my God. Oh, lift up your voice. Lift up your voice. Lift up your voice, somebody. Lift up your voice. Oh, lift up your voice. In the name of Jesus. Begin to pray for yourself. Begin to pray for yourself. Pray that you will have an encounter with God. That will change your destiny. That will change your life. That will cause you to fall in assignment and to fall in purpose. Pray, 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 pray. If, if you need prayer, if you need prayer, just put your hand on your chest. Let me pray for you right now. If you need prayer, just put your hand on your chest. Let me pray for you. Yes, in the name of Jesus. Oh, because he 